attending by Zoom and in person at the same time. Is it coming through Zoom? Are we getting a yes? I just want to make sure that they're hearing me okay. I'm actually going to Is it coming coming through okay? Can I get a heads up from the back? It's coming through all right. All right. So it's not that there were there might have been some celebrations in the sanctuary this morning, but to try to have the microphone here at the same time as receiving um, Steve's audio, we're, we're going to up the level of complexity as the weeks go on. And so we'll not have celebrations from us right now, and, unless we could do it right now. Okay. Does anyone have a celebration that they would like to add to the celebration jar from the sanctuary? the sanctuary here this morning and if you have maybe lit your Christ candle in your homes to join all together in the light of Christ later we're going to be either singing in our homes or humming in the sanctuary um, go light your world so it's so wonderful to have this candle burning this morning God greets us this morning brothers and sisters here in the sanctuary brothers and sisters in your homes grace and mercy and peace to you from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the sevenfold spirit which is before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. And all together, let's say, amen, amen. Jen will now, no, Carol, we switched it up this time. Carol is doing our call to worship this morning from in the sanctuary. Let us worship the eternal God, who is the source of love and life. Let us worship Jesus Christ, the risen one. Let us worship the Holy Spirit, who renews us. And let us praise the one true God at all times and in all places, here and on Zoom, through the grace of Jesus Christ.
Thank you, Sophia and Catherine. I'm hoping that's coming through for me. Heidi, got a thumbs up? Can you hear me? Hmm. Ah, there we go. Thank you, Catherine and Sophia. When we come into the holy presence of God, we are laid bare. When we stand in the truth, our sins are revealed. Together, we acknowledge who we are and our shortcomings before our Father. So let's pray together. God of justice, Savior to all, you have called us to act justly, to love mercy, and walk humbly before you, and yet we don't always answer that call. How often we forget to live in your law of love. How often we let our self-centeredness get in the way of reflecting your love in our lives. How often we ignore the promptings of the Holy Spirit that you pour out so freely. We come to you this morning with knowing that you love us unconditionally. Hear us as we now quietly bring those things that weigh heavily on our hearts to you. Forgive us, gracious God. You have shown us what you require. Guide our words and our actions to show your love. Encourage our hearts. Help us to see more clearly and to do more carefully and intentionally your work. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our God fulfills his promises and is true to his word. We have confessed our sins. God has forgiven us because Christ died for us. We read in Psalm 103, um, the words of assurance. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. So far is the east is from the west. So far has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. Hi, Westside Kids. I want to talk a little bit about an idea today that um, that we do mention in church. It's a word that you'll be familiar with probably, and that word is praise. When we praise God, um, what does that what does that mean, and what does it look like? And today I want to focus not only on just praise in general, but specifically on your praise, the praise of children. In the psalm that Pastor Heidi is going to be talking about in just a few minutes, which is Psalm 8, uh, there's a verse that is really quite cool. And it says, through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold. Whoa, that, what does that mean? The, a cool thing about the psalms, actually, is that they are written as poetry, as songs. And with all good poetry, there can be lots of different uh, true things that you can get out of them. And sometimes when we come back to poems like the Psalms, we can get new true things out of them every time we come. And I think this line is one that, that we can see lots of true things in. Today, the true thing that I get out of that when, God, when the Psalmist King David um, says that through the praise of children, God has established a stronghold. What that means to me today when I think about it is that your praise to God is important. It is so important in God's kingdom. A stronghold is something that we don't talk about as much as we talk about praise, uh, but a stronghold is, is like a fortress. It's like a safe place. It's a place of strength. It's a place uh, where you feel secure, um, where you're with people who, who love you. And so, Children's praise in this psalm 
is not described as something that is um, sort of extra or just for decoration or not very important. Your praise to God is the source of strength for the kingdom. God builds a stronghold from the praise of children. And I think that's just so, so cool. Um, when you listen to the, those words, and when you think about this psalm, um, I encourage you to think about what that means to you. Maybe there's another true thing that God puts on your heart when you hear those words. And I also want you to think about how we praise God. Um, we know that we can praise God through, um, through singing. That's a great way that we can praise God. Um, but there are many, many ways that we can praise God through our actions, through our words, uh, through our attitudes and our responses to one another. And your praise to God matters. It's important to the kingdom. It's important to God. And it has been all through history. So bless you. Have a great week. Keep praising God because that's what we need for the, a strong kingdom of God. I just want to thank, before we go any further, all of the tech people this morning. Oh my goodness, Perry and Silas back in the sound booth, Tim Yule and Hope on Zoom, um, and anyone else who's been troubleshooting with us, this is, this is a, quite a feat that's going on here. So we just also thank the Holy Spirit for being here and being our peace and our calm in the midst of um, it doing a hard thing together. So, um, and thank you to, to Catherine and to Jen and to Carol for your leadership in the service already this morning. So this is the joy of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay. So I invite you to turn in your Bibles if you're home with your own Bibles, or you'll be able to see on the screen, Psalm 8 this morning is our text. And if we want to go ahead, oh, no, I guess you keep the lights off when that's on. Right. Okay, sounds good. So I'm going to offer a prayer as we uh, enter God's word this morning, and um, it'll be from Psalm 8. So let's pray together. Oh, dear God, we thank you for the praise that you place in our hearts that we turn back to you. Every blessing you pour out, we turn back to praise. And we thank you for the praise of people of all ages, of people of all backgrounds and stories and socioeconomic conditions and, and race and ethnicity and wherever we are in the world, God, we are all created in your image and we have all been created to give you praise. And so this morning, as we, we listen to you and live into this psalm of praise, May you establish a stronghold through the praise of your people to silence the enemy. We pray in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So Psalm 8. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory in the heavens through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place. Read it up there. What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honor. You made them rulers over the works of your hands and you put everything under their feet. All flocks and all herds and the animals of the wild and the birds of the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim in the paths of the sea. Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name 
in all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I'll explain in a little bit, this morning's message is a combination of the word that we receive from the Lord and also a good word from a brother in Christ. So I graduated from Dort University back in 1999 with a dual major in philosophy and psychology. And the same year that I graduated, one of my favorite professors and my mentor retired. His name is John Vanderstelt, and you see him here. Um, actually, you can go ahead and put it up because I saw it up back there. So go ahead and put it up. This is John Vanderstelt, John Calvin Vanderstelt, another John Calvin, um, and his wife, Sandy. So this is taken just recently, but John was my professor of philosophy when I was in, in undergrad. He also taught philosophy to my dad, who was a philosophy major back in the late 60s and early 70s. And so um, my dad uh, began with John. Actually, John's first year of teaching was 1968 when my dad started Dort. And his last year of teaching was 1999 when I graduated Dort. So John sometimes called, sometimes called my dad and me his bookends to his career there. So um, John has a special place in our heart. He actually officiated part of my wedding to my first husband because my dad walked me down the aisle, so we needed a pastor at the other end to, to receive us. And so he is a dear friend of our family. Eight days ago, John and his family were gathered together to celebrate John and Sandy's 60th anniversary and also the completion of the book that John had spent 21 years writing all the years since his retirement, finally finished. And then they took a photo, this next photo, as a family. And moments after this photo was taken, John had a heart attack and went from the family that he was celebrating with into glory. That's so strange, right? Just to see this picture of here he is, at the peak of his life in this moment of celebration and then entering the realm of the saints of glory. And so today in honor of him, I wanna take that Psalm that you just heard, Psalm 8, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And I wanna share with you some words from John from this book. This book's title, is Marginal Resistance, and it's a book of essays published after John retired, written in his honor. And one of the essays is a conversation between the author of the essay and John, and it includes these words from John. And I think you're going to hear the resonances, but I'll draw them out between Psalm 8 and these words. Loving the Lord's law of love is the secret to living a life of liberty. By being in Christ as the mediating Savior, we can, according to the biblical message, begin to discern, acknowledge, and celebrate God's revelation, despite destructive evil and disruptive sin, still evident in creational existence, including human history. Our calling is to testify to this new reality in Christ and to do so in the manner in which we perform our different tasks. In a self-effacing way, we must provide marginal resistance to life-ruining forces in our self-centered and restless culture, and above all, provide an ethos of faithfulness to God which arises like a flower from a soil drenched in spirit-filled grace. In our daily life and in our theo a theoretical reflection on life, we are privileged living as we do under the rainbow of God's love to further disclose the meaning of created reality to the benefit of all God's creatures, human as well as non-human, and to the annoyance of all the forces of evil. I thank God as well for these words from John Calvin Vanderstelt. 
Now, the rest of this message is exploring the themes of those two words from Psalm 8 and from John Calvin Vanderstelt here. And the main thing in both the psalm and in John's life is that the name of the Lord is majestic over all the earth. That is the main thing. God's glory is majestic over all the earth, and we are to live our lives before God's face, doing everything before the face of God and for the kingdom of God. Now, that, that, that work and that life and that activity, um, when, when the psalmist was alive, you know, it was, it, he saw through a glass darkly, right? But as revelation progressed and as we came into the new covenant, we knew that the Lord's majesty was best seen in the law of love, in God's love. And that the love of God is best seen in Jesus Christ. And so John talks about us living according to the law of love. He talks about us being in Christ, and he talks about us being under the rainbow of God's love. So the majesty of the Lord, which we see most clearly in God's love and in Christ, is the main thing. And that's the main thing for John. That was the main thing for the psalmist. Now, as God's human creatures, we are invited and we are privileged and we are blessed to be able to, bless you, consider the work of God's fingers, the moon and the stars that God has set in place. It is our privilege and our calling to consider what it is that God has done, to, to study and to discern created reality and how, how it all functions and how it all works. That is our calling and our privilege and our blessing. And any of you who are studying right now, that is what you are doing. You are considering the works of God's fingers. You are considering the works of God's hands. And that is what we're invited to do as God's creatures. Now, I took two different classes when I was in, well, lots of different classes with John Vanderstelt, but the two that I remember most fondly, first of all, was philosophical anthropology, where we talk together about what it means to be human. What does it mean to be human? What does it mean to be created in God's image? What are our responsibilities as humans? That was considering the works of God's fingers. The other class that I took with him was systematic Christian philosophy, where we ask questions about the nature of all of reality. What does it mean? What, what does it mean to be? What is reality? How is reality structured? How does it function? What direction does it go? And when I think about all of the excellent classes I had with John, when I think about considering the works of God's fingers, I think about the first verse of this is my father's world. And to my listening ears, all nature sings and round me rings the music of the spheres. That is what we were invited to consider together in class. And that is what you who are studying right now, and that is what we're all invited to do, to consider the works of God's hands, the music of the spheres. Now we do this we do this for our benefit because it's wonderful for all of us to be able to learn this, but we also break open created reality and, and discern it and, and grow in our knowledge of it for the benefit of all of creation. It's for the benefit of others. It's not just so that we have a lot of good head knowledge that we do all this studying. It's for the purpose of, of building God's kingdom and, and taking care of God's good creation. That, that knowledge and that discernment has, ha, is, can be translated into us better taking care of one another and the earth. When you consider a tree, for example, and you just consider it as a resource for our use and our pleasure, well, that's not the whole of the reality of the tree. And 
philosophy courses at Dort, we talked about the nature of all of created reality. And when you look at a, a tree and consider its role in the grand scheme of things and the way that it's been structured and how it functions in all of society, that growth and appreciation for that tree will translate into ways that we treat all trees and forests with consideration for their part that they play in the fullness of creation. For human beings, when we consider human beings, the work of God's fingers, that we are all created in God's image, all of us, and that the dividing line between good and evil does not separate groups of people as if this group were good and this group were, were evil, but that the that dividing line cuts down the center of each and every human heart. That impacts how we understand ourselves, how we understand each other, and how we treat one another. So considering the works of God's fingers has the benefit of us being better stewards of God's creation and our relationships to one another. Now that dividing line between good and evil is a line that John knew very well, and it's a line that we know very well. He talked about in Marginal Resistance, he talked about the evil in this world. Psalm 8 talks about it as the foe and the avenger and the enemy, right? And John Van der Stelt talked about the destructive evil and disruptive sin that we see all around us, the forces of evil that he was very aware of. And when it comes to the forces of evil in this world, we may, you know, it, it's like we just might want to just get in there and blow it all up sometimes with how we see the evil all around us. But what John called us to here, and we'll get into where we see this also in Psalm 8 in a moment, he says that in a self-effacing way, we must provide marginal resistance to life-ruining forces in our self-centered and restless culture. We must provide, title of this book, Marginal Resistance. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means, I think it means a lot of things, and we could spend a lot of time unpacking that. But one of the things that it means is that we need, we need to be careful not to overestimate our power to dismantle the forces of evil or underestimate how deep evil runs. And so we need to find ourselves at the margins, pushing back where we can against the forces of evil. So that's one way to think about it. You think about us hanging out at the margins of, of cultural movements or, or things that, that are, are working against life and push back in ways, small ways perhaps, in order to dismantle these things slowly. But there's another way to think about that. It's, it's thinking about hanging out at the margins of even good things, right? Like when you think about um, positive movements that you're a part of, and if you are a person who is at the center of a really good thing that's going on, and you have a lot of power in, in doing that really good thing, it's really easy to forget about the people who are on the outsides of the center of that movement. And so it's important for us to hang out at the margins of anything powerful in order that we can see it from the inside and the outside at the same time. Marginal resistance means a lot of things, but one of them is, is pushing back in small ways and in careful ways, um, both to the forces of evil and to the the good things that are going on where there's a lot of power, but to be careful to always keep our eye on what's going on in other ways, in other places. So that's one way to think about marginal resistance. When I think about marginal resistance, I also think about a story that John told about his life in this chapter where we get the quote of this, or the title of this book. So John told a story from when he was 10 years old. It was Christmas Eve. 1944 in the Netherlands. World War II was going on. It was Christmas Eve in their little home. And six Nazi soldiers stormed into the house, furious 
furious because three of their friends had been killed earlier that day and demanded food from John's mom, who was in the kitchen. And John's mom said, I, no, I, I can't. And they said, why? Why can't you? And she said, because I have seven children. And they were so angry. And one of the soldiers, John remembered, took out his gun and started waving it around and said, I will kill them all. And John looked into the barrel of that gun. And he remembered thinking, God, I want to live. And at the same time thinking, Mom, give these guys some food. And he says he'll never forget what his dad did. His dad went into the living room that was adjacent to the kitchen and got on the pump organ and began to play Silent Night, Holy Night. All is calm, all is bright. And John says that within moments, those six soldiers had calmed down. And by the end of the evening, they were singing Christmas carols together in the Vanderstelt's living room. And showing the Vanderstelt's pictures, the soldiers were showing the Vanderstelt's pictures of their wives and kids. And I want to get this quote exactly right that John said. Mm -hmm. John said, God used my dad's music to transcend otherwise insurmountable barriers. There's something wonderful about the gospel, about the kingdom that transcends conflict. There's something wonderful about the gospel. There's something wonderful about music. There's something wonderful about the words that maybe we have known since we are little children to establish a stronghold against the enemy. I love how Eugene Peterson translates verse 2 of Psalm 8. He says it this way, and again, to get the quote exactly right, nursing infants gurgle choruses about you. Toddlers shout the songs that drown out enemy talk. The praise of children establishes a stronghold against the enemy. And this was very, very important to John. We would spend all sorts of time thinking about very theoretical things and getting really deep into systematic Christian philosophy. But John would remind us again and again and again that at the end of the day, in the beginning of the day, and all times in between, what mattered most was what he called pre-theoretical knowing. Simple faith. The faith and the knowledge that is there before we enter any philosophical conversations and discussions. It is that simple faith, which when proclaimed through praise establishes a stronghold against the enemies. Infants gurgle choruses, the psalmist says. Let the little children come to me and do not stand in their way, for to such belongs the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said. A little child will lead them, the prophet Isaiah said. Still a nacht, highly good nacht. The Vanderstelt sang with the soldiers, and their lives were spared. This marginal resistance that we do, whether it is through careful discernment of how to dismantle systems of injustice in our world. And I had a whole story I was going to tell you, but God had me skip over it for some reason, so we're just going to save it for another time. Whether that be through these careful theoretical works of how we dismantle slowly systems of injustice, or whether that be through the winsome songs of a child 
drowning out the voice of the enemy. When we do this marginal resistance, we are doing this all in the context of God's care for us. God cares for us. What is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? Well, God made us nigh unto angels, and and he gave us the gift of ruling over his creation and establishing the work of God's hands and considering the works of his fingers. And when we live into that call to praise and into that call to, to rule wisely as stewards of God's creation, we are not unlike a flower that is planted in the spirit-drenched soil and rises up to glorify God, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. Let's pray together. Dear God, as I look around me at your, your children gathered here in this space, and as I imagine the faces gathered together on Zoom, I thank you so much. We thank you for the call that you have placed on our lives, both to consider your handiwork in this world, to care stewardly for that handiwork, and also to resist the work of the evil one in marginal ways, in creative ways, and perhaps sometimes simply through song and praise. God, I pray that as we embody that marginal resistance, and annoy the forces of evil and as individuals and as a collective community here and through organizations that are represented through our congregation that are working to dismantle systems of injustice. God, I pray that, that you, you would empower us by your spirit to do just that. God, as we'll sing or hum in the sanctuary in a moment, we pray that we might light the world, that we might bring your light into the places of darkness, that we might hold the candle of Christ in all sorts of creative ways in this coming week. God, I thank you for the life of John Vanderstel. I thank you for the life of all of those saints who have gone before and who have helped to shape us and mentor us and shape our minds so that we, and our hearts, so that we might better reflect our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. In a moment, we're going to sing together, Go Light Your World. Just a reminder for those of us in the sanctuary, you may hum or simply listen to the words. If you're in your homes, let it, let it ring and sing with Kevin as we um, together worship with the song, Go Light Your World. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites the candle, and makes his home. So carry your candle, run to the darkness, seek out the hopeless, confused and torn. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle, go light your world. Take your Go light your world. Frustrated brother, see how he's tried to light his own candle some other way. See now your sister, 
she's been robbed and lied to still holds the candle without a flame so carry your candle run to the darkness seek out the lonely the tired and worn hold out your candle for all to see it take your hearts are blazing so let's raise our candles and light up the sky pray to our father in the name of jesus makes us a beacon in the darkest night so carry your candle run to the dark Seek out the helpless, deceived and poor. Hold out your candle for all to see it. Take your candle and go light your world. Carry your candle, run to the darkness. Seek out the hope. finish our service today um, just a word of thanks as well to our transition team we've now done week two of our transition work that team is Betty Ann and Carol and Doris and Jake and Fiona and myself and thanks to Grace and Fiona and Samara for their help today with the volunteer um, work getting everyone in and checked in so if you'd like to volunteer in any of those capacities we'd love to get you on the schedule so you can let Betty Ann know if you'd be willing to help out in that way um, a word about next Sunday service. So next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month, which means that it is communion Sunday. And we haven't exactly figured out how that's going to go yet, but it likely will mean that if you're coming to church, that you would bring your own communion elements. Um, so you'd somehow bring your own juice and, and bread. And uh, I think that would probably work just fine, but we'll definitely need to have an option for people who might have forgotten or who don't know as they're coming that that's the case. So be looking for um, a word about that. And when we are finished today, um, a couple of notes. So First of all, our offering today, which we don't collect in the service, but you can place in the box on your way out. Our offering is for Westside, or if you want to designate an offering for our denominational ministry work together, today we're highlighting safe church ministry. So congregations have safe church teams, classes have safe church teams, and the denomination has a resource office for that as well to help keep churches safe and to respond to things when things do come up, issues of abuse, but also to do great work in preventing that. So um, that is our denominational highlight for today. And so you may give specifically toward denominational ministry shares as well. Um, and you can give online through the Bridge app or the website, or you can just drop a check in the 
the box on the way out. We also have our tin for our compassion child. We haven't done that in weeks and weeks and months because we haven't had kids up front for the children's message. But if you would like to put a little something in the tin for our compassion child, you can do that on the way out of the sanctuary. When Fiona, um, our host, dismisses you, she'll start at the back and work toward the front. And we just ask that you go right out to the parking lot. We have another lovely day so we can spend some time speaking with one another. Just want to remind you to please make sure that there's distance between bubbles as you're having conversations outside. And if that's proving difficult, um, to keep your mask on as you're connecting with people outside. So that's just a good reminder for all of us as our neighbors pay attention to what's going on, especially as the numbers are rising in Kingston. They're looking at groups that are gathering, you know, outside. So we want to make sure that we're following social distancing um, protocol as we spend some time together out in the sanctuary. If you are on Zoom, I haven't double checked with Tim on this, but I think Tim Ewell is going to be placing you in breakout rooms if you'd like to stick around for that. Um, he'll let you know if it's different from that. Normally my Tim does that, but he's right here not doing Zoom right now. So, um, so we are sharing that responsibility. Okay, I think those are all the different announcements that I had. So at this time, we're going to change the Christ light. So Kevin was singing, you know, carry your candle, go light your world. As we change this light, this light goes with us wherever we go into the places of darkness, into the margins of society um, in order that we can build the kingdom through marginal work and marginal resistance to the forces of evil. So we change the light like this. And then I will ask those in the congregation here, and if you'd like to stand on Zoom as well, you may certainly stand in your living rooms or wherever you're at. So if you please stand to receive God's blessing. And then we will be listening to and humming the doxology in the sanctuary. If you're gathered at home, please sing out the, doxolo the doxology to establish a stronghold to silence the enemy. Brothers and sisters, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you from the tops of your heads to the soles of your feet his peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Praise.